What's up guys? Today we are going to be talking about the Battle Site Zero or BZO. So what we have here is not an authentic or original M4 series rifle. It is a replica, if you will. So it's just a semi-automatic only AR-15 that's been configured to look like an M4 series rifle that would get issued to soldiers, marines, service members abroad that currently serve in the U.S. military. So it's not a true 14 and a half inch barrel, it's a 16, but it's configured the same way. So what the current U.S. government issue weapons are running, just the standard A-frame sight posts, yes there are special units out there that have free floated handguards and have uh, flip up front sights and all that sort of thing. For standard military personnel they're still issued what you see here. There hasn't been any drastic changes yet. The Marines have the M27 and several other weapons that are configured a little bit differently. Gas piston operation rather than direct impingement if you will. But all the sighting systems are relatively similar. So we're going to go ahead and make the weapon safe. Okay, check the chamber is clear. So we're going to be talking about the MA Tech backup iron sight that you see here. This is the current backup iron sight that's used in lieu of your magnified or non-magnified optics, whatever units are deciding to run depending on their standard operating procedures or SOP. So the references for this is Marine Corps Reference Publication 3-01 Alpha for rifle as well as Field Manual 3-22.9 which is the field manual for marksmanship on the M4 and M16 series rifles. So, how you would battle sight zero on a standard 14 5 inch barrel, which we have this in lieu of the six thirds from the original carry handle that was affixed to the M4A1. So, you would just set it up to where you have a rotary adjust for the elevation in which is in lieu of that six thirds rotary turret that you'd see on a carrying handle. So how you set it up is you actually rotate it to the 300 meter line on the MA Tech BUIS site. So once we do that you can go ahead and shoot your groups. First it'll be six rounds for the Army and then you will of course make your adjustments. We won't make any adjustments for elevation back here since it's already set to 300. We'll make all our adjustments just like the original carry handle with our front sight posts up front and then our windage back here will adjust for that so once you have your zero it should take you no more than 18 rounds then you will have it set up and you will leave it at the 300 meter indexing line of your MA Tech sight and now we know that our iron sights are zero now if this is a 20 inch barrel so say this was an M1684 like what's issued to the United States Marine Corps and some army units, uh, not many. Uh, when I was in charge of an arms room, I only had one in the inventory, so that was assigned to our unit, but everything else was M4s, M16s, 249s, etc. So anyway, uh, you would then, once uh, you do your uh, zero on a 20-inch on barrel, you would actually not, in fact, zero it at the 300-meter indexing line. You would actually move it to the little line, which if you look closely, it's in between the three and the 400 meter indexing line. So once you complete your battle site zero, when you go off to the qualification range to shoot your qualification, so this in, is in lieu of the eight thirds that you would see on an M16A2 carry handle. So normally for zero, you would go eight thirds plus one, and then once you zero, you go to eight thirds flush, and then you go to the qualification range, engage your targets and shoot. So. Once you're done zeroing, you will move it back up to the 300 meter hit spot. And now it's set up as a 300 meter zero for a 20 inch barrel. And you will leave that for combat configuration as far as uh, your unit for deployment or taking these weapons out on patrols and actually engaging in uh, military operations. When making adjustments to the front sight post for elevation, one click per box on a standard U.S. Army 25 meter zero target. Clockwise moves the bullets up, counterclockwise moves the bullets down. When making adjustments to windage, turning the windage turret on the MA Tech backup iron sight clockwise 
will move the bullets right. Three clicks per square on a standard U.S. Army 25 meter zero target. Now we touched on during the 25 meter zero of using other optics. Now the foolproof method, especially if you have a front flip up sight, and this is only true for non-magnified optics. It will not work for a magnified optic. Or if you have the A-frame front sight like we have here, is zeroing the red dot sight or the reflex sight, whatever the case may be. So what we have here is a Neotech XPS series. So now that we've done our battle sight zero on our M4, what we're going to do is we're going to line the laser up in between the actual iron sight. So you're actually going to see the laser appear in between the rear sight aperture and the front sight post. So we'll go ahead and make those adjustments now. So now, in fact, we have a true battle sight zero with our red dot optic as well. So we can clearly see that the dot is perfectly in line with our backup iron sights. And now you can flip down your BYS, rear sight aperture, and you have a properly aligned red dot with your front sight post. So... That being said, uh, that is just a quick little tutorial and demonstration on how to battle sight zero your weapon. If you have any questions regarding any of this, you can refer to the Army Field Manual 3-22.9 and the Marine Corps Reference Publication 3-01 Alpha. Okay guys, one last thing I wanted to touch on today is we have here an actual UID label. I got this from Carolina Laser Works. That's www.carolinalaserworks.com. They actually print metallic UID labels, which are much higher quality than the official military and U.S. government UID labels that ships with current contract FN as well as Colt M4 and M16s and also M110s and many other weapons. So they have these for a whole variety of different weapon systems that the government currently puts UID labels on to track and it's easy for inventory purposes and whatnot. So I just thought I would uh, mention that because I know in the comments section I'm probably going to get some questions about them. Very high quality, $10 a piece. To me it's worth it if you want an authentic reproduction. This is definitely the way to go.